Welcome to Paley Front Row, part of the Paley at Home series presented by City. Big ideas often start small. When the global payments and software company Flywire wanted to get from here to there, they needed a global bank like City. With local teams in 95 countries, City was able to help Flywire grow and expand into businesses like education, healthcare, travel, and B2B worldwide. In turn, inspiring the next generation of ideas for the love of moving businesses forward, for the love of progress, City. Welcome. Thank you for coming tonight. Okay, so I'm gonna say a, just a tiny little thing. One little thing, I am gay. <laughs> right? Oh my God, yeah, I'm gay. And, um, and, and, and 25 years ago, I got even gayer, if you can imagine <laughs> such a thing. You know, it was for us, for my generation, for so many of us in the room, it was a kind of a watershed, right? Will and Grace. And since, culture and the world has changed so much, we don't even notice it in the rear view mirror. But tonight, we're gonna to talk a lot about how the world has changed and how Will and Grace still remains the most incredible, classic, unbelievable representation for our community. Let's welcome our panelists, shall we? Starting with um, Max Muchnick and David Cohen. Welcome, Deborah Messing. Well, okay, that's amazing. You sent your stuff. Okay, there, you okay. there you go. And Eric McCormick. Hey, wow. Is that mine? Yeah. Yeah. So you guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isaac. What you been up to? Well, I want to start with to me the most important thing, which was um, Grace's hair throughout. <laughs> you know, I have to say, I like it curly, I like it full, and there are no extensions, right? That's your actual hair. Okay, now I, I, I wanna start with this kind of, I, I don't know, a lot of the audience might be a little young, that's a compliment, you guys. <laughs> but um, can we go back to 1998 and talk about what it was like to be gay the culture, the whole world that we were facing when Will and Grace came on the air, right? I mean. Well, I, I know you told me not to talk. No, I so want I you to say everything. You told what? me not to say anything. I just don't want you to but dominate. But I will say, 1998, as you no, I won't. I, will, I really, it's, it's about them. But, but <laughs> uh, and I, I mean, I didn't want to do it. He, the, the straight ally, which we all need, was the one who kind of made the whole thing happen because I was, I was uncomfortable with But it. you got half the money. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Because gays we, are shrewd. We shot, we shot the pilot like two months after Ellen DeGeneres was fired for when she Pretty. came out as gay. Right. And so I just remember saying to him, I'm like, two episodes? What will we get? Three? Yeah. Before and they, they, I, they I didn't, cancel. Somehow, I didn't feel that. I felt like the, the, the essence of the show was our secret weapon, that, that somehow, and thank you to Ellen for whatever, greasing the wheels, yeah, but yeah. I just thought, this is not gonna be the thing that gets us off the air. This is gonna be the thing, if we play it right, uh, we'll launch I, I mean, I think Eric said, uh, you, you said you were more worried about it going a long time than you were, it, 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 you know, that was the bigger concern, Well, right? yeah. I, I didn't know that. Because I, I, the, the idea head homo of, of the United States. States yeah. Yeah. For, for t I don't know why I thought this is, I was already 35 when it happened. I was like, thank God it went for as long as it did. But, but yeah, the idea of a thing locking you into your legacy, now I couldn't be happier. Mm -hmm. But at the time it was like, but, but what if there's, what if, no, there's nothing better, there's nothing better than the show for, yeah. yeah. Nothing better than the show, period. Let's just put it that way. But I mean, I remember in the day, right, going to like gay bars and kind of bonding with my gay brothers and sisters, you know, and others, right, trans people and all kinds of, you know, uh, uh, non-binary, et cetera. But the thing is, um, at some point, it became this kind of like um, uh, mission, you know, for you guys, right? Like, how did that, who did it occur to? It occurred to you, is that right? 
It was, to, I mean, we were, we were tasked with coming up with a romantic comedy to replace Mad About You. And I mean, that, that, that was it. And to our way of thinking, a, a, a good romantic comedy is a love story with an, with an obstacle, right? And, and this seems like a pretty good obstacle, right? <laughs> Um, and uh, so I remember also thinking that there were always coded, like, like, you know, gay characters just in general were sort of coded. One thing that we always used to talk about was um, Love Sydney. the show Love Sydney, where Tony Randall played a guy who was shy. <laughs> <laughs> he was shy. It was a three letter word ending in Y. He went to shy bars. <laughs> So was it easier to make, was it easier to write a show about gays and, 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 and the way they were integrated into it was, the world? It was easy to write a show about people we knew. I mean, it was about, about people in our lives. They you know? NBC, to their credit, they picked it. I mean, we went and pitched a show because we were replacing Mad About You. We went and wrote like, you know, a basic heterosexual love story and their neighbors were, were these two. And they, and Warren Littlefield, to his credit, said, you two seem to really have a vibe on that gay guy and that straight girl next door. Let's make that the show. Right. And that's, that's how it came to be. It was, we pitched, they were part of a different ensemble. This is amazing. Yeah. Did you guys audition? Did you audition? Mm -hmm. Yes. You did? <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know how jobs come about in Hollywood, you know. That's a good story. That's no, I want to hear the Deborah story. Getting, tell, Deborah getting tell us right. Deborah's, Deborah's audition, well, then well, I want to hear about your audition. Wait a minute, you got to go, go, go in order. We're going to go in order. You got to go in order. So I oh, went to... He's first. Okay. I went to network with uh, with one person, not, not a series of couples. It was just me and Marin Hinkle, who is now... The, uh, oh, you know, I wasn't going to say her name. This is Maisel on the on the Maisel or whatever. Uh, she's yeah. the, uh, the, two and a half men. Yeah. She was on the, uh. yeah. But oh, so, that. And, and it was Maisel. just the two of us. And I was given the impression by everybody that it's like, they like the two of you together or they don't, and that's it. The show dies if you're... And, and it didn't happen that way. They offered me the part. And so I had a month of like, this show's going to die if we don't find the perfect grace. And I read with several women with, for you guys, I went to network, I think one or two mm -hmm. more times. Mm -hmm. um, any, any dirt? You want to tell us any um, dirt? About the, dirt the... the dirt comes with the, with oh, the okay. when okay, she okay. shows up. <laughs> yeah. But then the final story was, okay. I, you never got, you guys didn't really tell me this, but they wanted Deborah. It's just that she was attached to another show. She'll tell you about that. But then this they audition. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. They always wanted you. But we just didn't think we could get you because you were attached to that ABC show called Prey. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So they set up this whole thing, this espionage at Jimmy Burrow's house where Deborah and two other women that they did not want but were sort of made to feel like. Let me, wait. Okay, then Do you, you know go. who they were? Do you know who they wait, were? Wait, wait, wait. Um, I, I had just wrapped Prey and I was exhausted. And my agents called and said, We have a special script. And I was like, I'm too tired. Call me back in three months. <gasps> wow. Yeah. And she said every script that ever came out every week, she would say the same. Yeah, she's never caught up on her sleep. I need more She's never sleep. caught up on her sleep. And um, they're like, we will messenger it to you because it is so special. And I was like, as long as I'm in bed. <laughs> <laughs> and I read it and I was like, oh, wow, this is special. And um, I went in and had a meeting with these two. And um, I was still feeling like I'm just too tired. I'm just too tired. <laughs> And then they came, they came over to my house with a bottle of vodka and a lime <laughs> and said, ask us questions. And for three hours and very drunk, um, we spoke and I started feeling better about it. And then they said, okay. Um, will you read with him? Will you read <gasps> with, we, are, we have our will. Um, and you know, you don't, you don't even have to negotiate, just will you read? And I was like, okay, we'll see how this goes. And they're like, it's at Jimmy Burroughs' house. Now Jimmy Burroughs is a legend. And I just thought, oh my God, we're going to Jimmy's house. And met this furry guy because <laughs> he's tied a big beard and mustache from Lonesome Dove. Yeah. And we read together and it was effortless. It was effortless. We were laughing at each other. And then um, I was walking out, and Jimmy comes out, and he goes, you got to do the show. 
<laughs> and and I and I was like, oh Jimmy, I was like, I I don't know, I've got to I've got to think on it. He was like, you will never ever find a you know a show like this again. I had been told that I was the only person who was auditioning <laughs> that day. Oh, <laughs> not true. <laughs> No, they had this this uh, cadre of cars coming in, dropping women off. We knew it was going to be Deborah, but we, you it have was to. three three of us. But you had so naturally it had to be Deborah, Nicola Sheridan, and a girl from a Kleenex commercial. <laughs> and and <laughs> she, was, she was like the hot chick in the commercials that year. And, and so there were these three people, we, we always knew it was going to be this one, but you have to do what you have to do. And they also said, we couldn't give it to you in the room. Right, because of the because of the Farrah Fawcett thing, because uh, Farrah Fawcett Farrah. got the job on Charlie's Angels before they closed her deal, oh, yeah. and so she had them over a barrel, you know. And so you're not you're not supposed to give the actor the job before the deal is signed, <laughs> um, and that's why it was such a joke that Jim and Warren chased you out of the house to say it's yours, it's yours, you know. We didn't sign, we didn't sign. And I was like, yeah. wow, this car is, has blackout. Windows. Yeah. <laughs> because we had to have, so we had cars going up and down, the up and down. It was uh, coordinated because each actress couldn't know about the other actress auditioning. It was very cloak and dagger. And, and but Deborah was it's last. It's shady. Yeah. It's the shady. Yeah. I have to say, I have to say, one of the great things about the show is that it's about a world where you have a gay character and you. You know, first of all, what was it like preparing to play a straight woman? Okay. <laughs> but, but I, I'm still working on it. Right, you're still, still at it. No, but, uh, but, but no, you understand what I'm saying. Like, even yeah. today, you see shows. There's a show that I really like on CBS called Ghost. You know that show? And there's a gay character. You know, and he's, he's like relentlessly, this poor guy. He's a great actor. Brandon, I forgot his name. He's amazing. And he has to be so gay, you know, at, at all times. What I loved about Will and Grace was that it was quite integrated. It was a world in yeah, New York yeah. City. Which, by the way, do you think it could have taken place anywhere else besides New York City or what? It wouldn't have been as fun. Yeah. Right. But was it a conscious decision to... Kind of, because look, boys in the band, you know, falsetto. You had a lot of gay stuff going on, but this is really something where, and even to some extent, like the Ellen thing that failed, you know, talk about that. Talk about integrating it into the world more. Well, for just in response to what you're saying about the Ellen thing, and that was, that, it's like, is this a cautionary tale? You know, she came out and the show kind of like began. And, but to my way of thinking, it's like, well, you know, it has nothing to do. It, the problem there was that the character changed utterly midstream, right? right? I mean, had she decided instead that, you know, she was going to become a nun, it would be <laughs> equally problematic, right. right? Because it's like, that's not who this character was. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's, she's going along this path and suddenly she does a, you know, a radical turn in a different direction. This seemed organic because we knew the people. We knew who they were. We knew this. In fact, one of them is right there. Yeah, where is she? <laughs> there's Grace. Oh, no, stand yeah. up. Yeah, there's Janet. Janet. Uh, <laughs> see, the relationship between Max <laughs> and Janet was sort of a template of a, of a romantic comedy with an uh, insurmountable obstacle. Right. And so, so you decide, you are a theater goat, you guys, like, you understood what was going on culturally and you were like, we want to make this show where it's like, not just a gay thing. It was, it more... was, it was say the thing. We were say the thing. You know what the thing is. Don't, don't try to hide it. Don't try to code it. Just mm -hmm. talk the way we would talk, you know? And yet it was a, it was a network show, right? Yeah. So you couldn't do what you might've done on say HBO, right? With the same subject yes. matter. And the guy running the network at the time was a sports guy, right? Named Don Olmeyer, you know, who, who, yeah. And, and so we oh, thought, geez, we thought this was going to be hugely problematic. <laughs> we thought it was going to be a big problem, but in, fa in fairness to him, he was, he, he said, all I, all we ask is that you be true to who this character is. Don't try to make him some kind of political statement. Don't try to go too far in the other direction. Be true to who he is. And if you do that successfully, I see this show working. Well, and the brilliance was that there was two characters. There was Will and there was Jack. Mm -hmm. So Jack could be right. as free Fantasy, Jack as he could be. Broad. Yes, yeah. uh, broad, but, but real. But funny. It's, but not yeah. the only one. That's right. not the only mm -hmm. gay character you're getting. You're getting another guy that actually wanted to find love with one person, which is not a character they'd seen before. 
So while I'm talking to you, darling, while you're speaking, mm -hmm. and political, we're talking about a political scene, right? Um, what was it like playing a gay person? Incredibly freeing, because I, you know, I was saying this to someone on the red carpet. I, I was, forgive the use of the, of the word, but I was called a fag in second grade for the, my entire school years. I was, right. I was beat up. I was part of a community I didn't know was part of. I, I, I entered the theater, everyone I knew was gay. So I, I felt like I was doing it for a lot of other people. Besides, it wasn't just a, a part, it was something that was in me. Is there something that you say to people who kind of go, hey, wait a minute, there are so many gay actors who would have played. That wasn't a they thing. They weren't out. That wasn't a thing. That wasn't a thing they then. They weren't okay. out then. Uh, is it a thing now? Like with the reboot? I mean, yeah, I think? Uh, no, it wasn't, it wasn't. I still don't for, All right, I guess an actor, I, I still an don't actor think it's should be able to play a part. Right, And exactly. he did a masterful job for a very he long sure time. He sure did. So, <laughs> God bless, thank God. You know. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about the subject of romance, okay? Because like mm. your romantic life was a big, big, big draw for me. Like I oh. thought I liked the gay thing, but what I really liked was following Grace's kind of romantic antic, right? Wow. Um, talk about that for a minute, because you had, who was it? It was Harry Connick Jr. Mm -hmm. Before yep. Harry Connick. Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson, right, exactly. Ed Burns. Ed Burns. <laughs> Grace had some good pussy or something. <laughs> <laughs> she had some amazing, and David Schwimmer, right? David, David Schwimmer. Schwimmer. And then like 98 other people that I kissed. Right, 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 right. How important to Matt the Damon. show. Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Matt Damon yeah. grabbed my ass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I liked it. How important was that to the, to the success of the show, you think? I want Deborah to speak to it first. Um, I. I think that it was very important to show, uh, to have a balance, you know? Um, I think that it, it, was, it was rich with opportunity to be funny and, and to bring lots and lots of different characters in. Um, I think had she had, if, had she gotten married in the pilot the way that we were supposed to, I, I just think it, it would have lost a lot of its spark. Right. By the way, I love that hair. Mm -hmm. That's sort of a little orphanity thing. This is an ode to Grace. <laughs> no, I know, but I love but the it's shorter. All, you know, curly. it's all it's about okay. it's all about the the straight allies, the the, the community having. I mean, this right. character anointed right. the rest of the show. Absolutely, that, that was the, what I was. You know, it, it's like you don't realize the weight that that she pulled in in that narrative. You you were there because you watched Grace, and then all this other stuff was going on. I remember uh, when I saw, life. I remember when I went to see um, Angels in America, which was probably the greatest thing I've ever seen on stage in Amen. my entire life. Yep. And that was a million years ago, right? Yep. But I remember thinking, wow, and he called it a gay fantasia. And I don't understand mm. why, because it was really the story about integration. And I think yes. like that's what I was getting at about Grace's romantic life, you know? And also, you know, um, Eric, Will's romantic life was like a big kind of, because you had Jack kind of fooling around constantly and all the jokes and this broad kind yeah. of presence and coming out to his mother, which was something unbelievable, mm -hmm. deep, you know, beautiful. beautiful. But I think, who is it? Bobby Cannavale. Yes. Us. Eventually Bobby with I Patrick Dempsey for a couple of episodes. Right. Uh, Matt Boner. Matt Bomer. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. I did say that. One of, my, my, one of my favorite things that these guys wrote, first of all, because of a relationship that David had, Sidney Pollack played my dad, which was unbelievable. Yeah. And, but one of the great things they wrote was that my dad appeared to be completely good with it all. He was that yeah. dad that accepted me as gay and we had so many lovely, and then there was an episode, was the, probably the first one, where you realized that he was telling everybody at work that you were my wife mm -hmm. and that he wasn't as okay as he said. And, and it wasn't anything anti-gay, it was just the uncomfortability of a man of a certain age. It was handled so beautifully. Yeah, yeah. And, yes, I and I remember one of my favorite storylines. By the way, when I was on the red carpet, I was asked like 10 times, which were my favorite moments. And I was like, I, I, I couldn't think of one. And now, of course, it's all coming back to me and seeing the clips. This is a great night. Mm -hmm. It's a great night. Mm -hmm. um, so let's talk about the path of creation of this show, okay? Was there a, an agent, a pitch? How did this go? You said that NBC just mysteriously called you guys and said, hey, write a show. We, we, 
it, we had, I mean, we, we said what, you know, what is NBC interested in this season? And that is what they said, like Mad About You is going on. So did you write a pilot? Or was it, they said, no, 13 episodes or 26 episodes or. They didn't do that back then either. No. Yeah. yeah. No. Right. Yeah. No, they, we, we, we pitched it. They said, this is the relationship we're interested in. And then we wrote, and then we wrote the pilot wow. and then said, and then it was, and once we wrote that pilot, they said, if you can cast, if you can cast it, we're interested. They said we had to have him. If we yeah, had, that was the first if we had the gay guy that yeah. was uh, palatable to the public, uh, really was what he was saying. If, right. we, if we could pull that off. the best review I've ever had. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why he, it was so key. It was so. Key. I mean, was I, it? I thought the thing that was was really fascinating was how far into the series we were, and there were people still saying, "Are Will and Grace going to get married?" Yeah. <laughs> right. Wow. I mean, one of the reasons why the show tested so well is that for some reason uh, the test audiences had no idea that they weren't a couple. It's like, it's, Amazing. because it's all about you, because you have a visceral thing. You watch a show and you either respond or you don't to the people that are on the screen. Well, it's they about, were and, stupid. And, and they were also, <laughs> they were also <laughs> all in Las Vegas. I was in a wedding gown. I know, I know. I know. Dan, we referred to a boyfriend Danny, named Michael through yeah. the whole show. Michael. That's, yeah. But do you was, remember how they marketed it? They didn't market it. They market, it's like, they're not a couple. They're a couple oh. of friends. Right. And so, and it wasn't, there friends. was no indication that, of that, that, uh, it was just not what they were emphasizing. And, and you know what's interesting? Because I just saw, I watched it the other day and I thought, oh, I bet. And it was Don Allmeyer that wanted it. These two, it, we didn't write it. They, you kiss at the end of the <gasps> pilot. And, yep. and right. Deborah sa and Grace says to Will, anything, anything? Do you, yeah. you know, you, right. do you feel anything? That is, n that would never, ever fly today. Right. Like, is it, so, you know, could I get you to make a turn? Could Can I maybe, slip you? Yeah. Could you be, be into yeah. this magical vagina or what, you know? <laughs> and it's like, no, he it was actually sense. born this way. I, mean, right? I have to tell you though, I have but to tell you But it's so though. interesting that like, they made <laughs> us do that. They, they had to see that, that, it, uh, that maybe there was a chance. That's what they wanted the audience to think. They might get together. Jimmy was very into that that notion. They right. might be together. They might end up together. Yeah. Was it a hit from the beginning? No. no. I mean, it it built. Built. It built. did okay. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. Okay. And um, and then um, you know uh, this idea that you were talking earlier about jokes that you could and couldn't make. You know, I watch it now. And I don't go, oh, no, you know, I mean, because so many shows you watch now, it's like, oh, or like, you know, Judy Garland movies, you know, whatever it is, you go like, oh, no, Fred Astaire, don't, don't do that. You know, mm -hmm. I don't do that so much on this show, you know, nice. um, are there, are there, are there, how easy is that to make a classic show where you don't cringe 25 years later watching it, you know, and what's the secret, darling? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> the answer to that question is. Um, uh, it, don't look it, at any no. of the Rosario episodes. Uh, honestly? Uh, yeah. yeah. And you won't yeah, cringe. Yeah. Just don't look at anything that Rosario that was in. That's right. And you'll be A-OK. -okay. And have no problem with black people not being on 43 <laughs> episodes. And you're fine. We had, I forgot there, there about the things. Rosario. There were some things. I don't want to shit on no, the No, but you know, it's you know, a we little bit. We perfect. No, but it's, it was, honestly, it was, like you said, people didn't re realize that he wasn't gay. You, right? you do better when you know to be better, whatever. Oprah of course. You do. But of let's course, say, you know, there were some things. I mean, honestly, it's like if you have an idea of of really who these characters are, yeah, and and you are true to that sense of who they are, you're not you're not really going to go wrong because you're not. That's just that's who they are. This is the life. This is the life that they have taken on, and we're going to follow that as opposed to you know we have an agenda or we have a certain kind of comedy that we want to put out there, and that's what we're writing to. You write. Be true to who the characters are, and you're in pretty safe territory. And to these guys' credit, they were always open to our yeah. thoughts. I mean, every day, every rehearsal, yeah. we'd go, "This one joke, or this one thing doesn't fit." And it was not we were trying. We weren't trying to write the show. We were just trying to say, "This needs to last for 25 years. This yeah. needs to right. sound good coming out and be real and be right." It felt like it was approached with a great deal of love and humor, not to get like sort of pandery, but it did. It felt like that. And 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 here's a question. You know, because I do remember, you know, certain shows kind of hedging towards gay or being gay 
or, you know, people pitching a lot of gay shows. Yeah. What was it about Will and Grace that was the gay show that, first of all, the network picked, and second of all, the, the world picked? Can you say? Go. I mean, it, it, our, our objective was never to put out any kind of agenda. Our objective was to write an entertaining show about these people that we knew. I mean, that was really it. So, and I, I actually think that spirit had a lot to do with it. We had, we also, we weren't trying to be bold. We were actually trying to just stay on the air. So it's not like- The we, entertaining was yeah. the first funny that we dealt and, with, and, that, that's what it was about. And they're brilliant writers. I mean, here, here. it all comes back to what's on the page. And to some extent, to some extent, you said it earlier, like there was something interesting or almost better than saying the word, sh about saying the word shy or something. Mm -hmm. You know, there is something about that, right? They, well, mean, they've always liked the limitations of network television that you couldn't, there were things you couldn't say. You had and, to say things yeah. without saying them. And I yeah. was very guarded about it because I was, I, I, as the gay guy, you know, I wanted, um, I wanted to be liked and accepted just like I did in my home. Right. And, and I brought a lot of that personally to the writing room. I, 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 I wasn't into the idea of anybody being overwhelmed and there were organizations that were all over us about, you know, we wanna see Eric do this and we wanna see him do that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, let's, let's treat America like our parents, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and just show them the respect they need and we'll, we'll, we'll get them there. I'd, I'd rather go a little slow at the beginning and then, and then my here we are. The and then the blow job. <laughs> yeah. My favorite always being, early on you and I were, you were voting for some woman as the mayor because she was a woman and I was voting for a guy because he was gay. And she said, you're just voting for him because he's gay. What do you know about him? What are his positions? And I said, I don't know. I think he's a top. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and I thought we'll never get away with that joke, but we did because I don't think the censors even knew what it meant. So we started sort of educate people a little bit, and, and I love that. Once you did get it greenlit, once you did get it on the air, because I remember I, I, uh, I, I knew some, I knew Ellen a little bit, and I knew someone very close to Ellen, and I know that on her talk show they torture her like gayer, not so gay. Cut your hair, da da da. You know, it's like the network has notes, right? Oh yeah. Did they did they drive you crazy once you got green lit? Once you were a hit, because when you're a hit, right? It's like that wasn't our thing. Yeah, they well, they wanted me to have big boobs. Oh, that well. that's a different. That's I've a given different you. Thing. <laughs> I've given you that note. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> that's a different. Yeah, the thing. the very the very first fitting, they had the little chicken cutlets, <gasps> mm -hmm. and you know it to make me bigger, and I was like, wait, that's what they used. No, they're real chicken cutlets. <laughs> they're called cutlets. They're like little water. They're like little watery. Yeah. Doesn't seem healthy. <laughs> they were cooked. They were totally cooked. Oh, they really good. That's what I worried. And uh, and I had and I was put in cutlets in the the show I had done prior, and I just wasn't a fan of like the whole idea of it. And I was like, you know what? I I'm I'm I don't need that. And right. she was like, well. It's the president of the network. <gasps> well, you see, that's what I'm saying. They do it. And I said, oh, I said, if he wants it, then he needs to come here and tell me yeah. to my face <laughs> that I, he wants me to. You never did. But that's that's an incredible thing about Deborah. I mean, your power as a woman and as the lead, um, uh, she dictated a lot of what was going to happen on that stage. Uh, definitely with the character, but I think that we we followed you. You know, you told us what was okay to write about and yeah. what wasn't okay to write about. And I mean, I was it like chewier, chewier. Yeah, but yeah, but her, <laughs> you know, we talked about her body in the ways that she said it, yep. she was in charge of all of that. You know, um, and one, and that one of the things good. about about any of, any of the criticisms, you could just write into the script. Yeah, you know, it's like why. Why aren't why are why aren't we seeing like uh, Will with a boy Will making out with his boyfriend? It's like oh that's a criticism. Let's write that in as a storyline. Right. You know why is it, why aren't Grace's boobs bigger? 
Well, <laughs> we can make that a story. That became a story. Those Str- all became thing stories. Was a super-sized episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Nice one. Um, so, 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 <laughs> so, what about the reboot? Whose idea was there? How did that come about? Such a good story. Um, my husband and I were in London, and the election, the 2016 election, was taking place, and I thought, <sighs> oh God, if we had the show. I would love to see Karen working out Rosario on a rock climbing wall mm-hmm. to get out of America. <laughs> to, to be able to wow. then return immediately. <laughs> and 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 Eric said, you know, the set was uh, was at my alma mater. Eric's husband. husband. Eric, my husband. Is this husband? There's a, I have an Eric C and an Eric K in my life. And Eric uh, with the K said, you know, the set was on its way back from Emerson, uh, my alma mater. It was coming back to uh, uh, you know L.A. and we stopped the set um, and we did a detour, went to Radford, called these guys and said, hey. Radford's the studio where we yeah, shot Yeah, Radford is where we shot all the episodes. And I said, you want to do this? And then we shot an episode and, and they all showed up. And, it was and totally I, top yeah. secret. Like our, yeah. agents our agents didn't know. Didn't know. Our lawyers knew. didn't know. Yeah, and no one, no one on the, at the studio knew. Either. Why? Because we, because legally you're in like you're in strange waters there because it, technically NBC owns the characters and this is <sighs> more or less a political what we were making was was kind so, of a yep. a political we were making a political statement, statement. but I, but it, what was built wow. into the architecture of the show was that we had Karen who was obviously going to be a Trump supporter yeah it was and we right. should, you know it was just like. Oh, this is this will be such a good uh, fertile place to write, and we shot this thing, and I sent it to our lawyer, and he said, you know, just get ready to lose all of your syndication. <laughs> if, if you change, there's a thing. If you change the essence of a show, um, uh, you know that it it no longer stands for what it originally stood for. Um, then you tamper with the possibility of its you know, earning potential. And um, and it was then that they set up a secret meeting with our, with our you know, our, uh, God bless Bob Greenblatt, who, who was running NBC at the time. And they said, he's always been a big fan of the show. And they put me on the phone with him. I had never met him. And uh, I just began to weep and said, yeah. I, I, I beg of you, I have this thing. We made, we made an episode of the show. It's great. I said, what do you mean you made an episode of the show? I said, we made an episode of the show. Where? On, on the set. With who? <laughs> with the actors. You know? And, and can I just yeah. send it to you? Can you just say, you know, uh, and we sent it to him. And it was supposed to be eight minutes. And we shot, like, 42 minutes. Mm-hmm. And uh, we it, cut it down. We cut it down. We cut it, it down. And we it was down. nine we minutes. Down. Yeah. And we put it on the air, but you know, uh, it you was put it online. You put, put it online. Put it online. Yeah, put it online. By the way, Whatever I could. It's called. I I feel like the reboot, well, the whole thing, but especially the reboot, was so incredibly relevant. I could have watched. I could still be watching. Her. But we thought Hillary was going to be winning, and and it's I, there's the the saddest letter in my office um, is Hillary, who who we she she watched it. She saw the thing, yeah. and she said, I, I I feel like the wind is finally at my back. And thank you oh, for doing this. Really? And I'm like, I'm going to do it. It's going to be great. Yeah, no, it's such a crazy letter, and it and it's right there. And then the next day, you know, uh, Director Comey decided to investigate, you know, whatever. She what brought was doing. it to an end? I, I you know, because I, 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 I think it could still be on. You know, I think the comedy, the idea of having the two characters and then the other two characters and that kind of dialogue would be so superb today. You know. It, <laughs> one of the things, no comment. <laughs> one of the things that we, that you guys decided early on because of that uh, short that we made. That got it was supposed to be 10 episodes. Yeah, we agreed to 10. Uh, but the first one was you got a, a deal to uh, design the, 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 White the White House. The White House. The Oval so Office. We were political from the beginning in the reboot and in a, a hilarious way, but definitely uh, we were pushing a partisan it. way. We were definitely partisan. I think that at that time, um, it pushed some people away. They, they didn't want us to be political. That, it was surpri- that was surprising to that, me. It yeah. was surprising about the, you know, I came to be entertained. Why is this thing political, yeah. you know? And, uh, and The number of people I've had come up to me over the years, particularly in the last few, and just say, you know, I'm, I'm a Trump supporter, but I love your show. And I just go, 
Really? Okay. Mm. okay. <laughs> Thank you, but it's weird. So that's, I mean, I think that is the, the legacy of the show. One of the legacies is that we walked this line that allowed people that don't want to know gay well, people. that's why I think it's the like, greatest thing for today, yeah. you know, walking that line. You know, yeah. Really superb, because no one does that. You're either there or you're there, you know. Um, so I think my last question, before we open it up to the questions and the thing yeah. in, the, in the house, so get some good questions ready. <laughs> Um, will there be another reboot anytime? No. Mm -hmm. No. Really? Just like that? Just no? Not even, yeah, we'll think about it, or what we if the money's so triple or something? <laughs> we were so privileged to be able to come back and do that. So, so few, you know, casts were able to come back and live in those characters mm -hmm. again. Um, it, it just feels like at some point you just want to... They were all still skinny. They didn't look like they were 300, you know. So it was like, good. It's, I, wow. no, you know, I guess we look like we're... No, no, no. They're still beautiful. I, I, they're beautiful people. Not skinny. People. Well, you... Yeah, he's but, mean. No, um, no I, 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 I made a joke. I was like, the only thing that I could possibly see is coming back as like Will and Grace the Golden Girls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? All right, I think, we're supposed to, I think we're supposed to open it up to questions, right? Yeah, let's open it up. I think we're supposed to open it up to questions. Oh, look, there's a hand. I saw yours first. <laughs> Will you say your name and then the question, please? Yes. Okay. Hello, um, my name is Sabrina Carton. And for context, I should tell you, Deborah, I have been on many organizing Zooms with you. I work with Linda Carter on mobilizing her fandom oh, wow. uh, for social change. So it's, it's good to see you. You look way more 3D in person. <laughs> Um, so my question is actually about the, ev the evolution of the Will and Grace fandom. Um, you started your show kind of before everyone had Twitter and the internet and before social networks. How did you notice the fandom evolve and change? Like what, what, what about the fandom was different for you after the reboot versus when you first started the show? Oh, af well, I mean, when we first started, we got letters. <laughs> Back then, they wrote on paper, <laughs> and they had to put a stamp on it, stamp. and then it went, um, and we got letters, and, and I think that it, right at the beginning, I think a lot, of, a lot of it was from the gay community saying, this is the first time there's ever been representation in prime time, and I can't tell you, you know, how much this is healing my family, or I, wow. watch, I watch with my mother, you know? Um, as the years went on, uh, you know, then then it was clear that that we had fans and and they let us know when we were out and about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> were there trolls? Were there handwritten trolls? Mm -hmm. I'm kidding. No. Were there? No, right? They were just no. stalkers. Just stalkers. Just stalkers. Yeah. 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 Who has a question? Trolls don't want to spend money on us. Yeah, trolls are late. <laughs> Um, first, I just want to say thank you to all of you because you've brought so much joy to like all of our homes and just I'm I've been a huge Will and Grace fan and I love the show and you've done so much for all of us. So thank you for bringing us all so much joy. Um, I was also going to ask as somebody who is starting off in this industry, uh, what is your advice to people who are actors looking to do what you do? And for those of us who also want to be in the writing room, uh, what is your advice to up and coming writers, specifically wow. in comedy? I, I would just say that a lot of the things I've said over the years to young actors, I, I don't even think are, are as valid anymore. Because I, yeah. you, can, you can do things now that we could never do. I would say to anybody under 30, you know, make, a, make something on your phone, write something shoot it with your friends, put it on YouTube or whatever TikTok. else. TikTok. Mean, TikTok. I mean, I, these, the old ways are, are really kind old. of dead. You know? <laughs> they're really, they're kind of dead. You have to be a self-starter. You have to be your, your own best friend. And also, um, you said the way, the way we did it. They don't do that anymore. Like, you know, it, it was four camera, old school, live, you know, broad, comedy. And once Sex and the City came along, that whole genre started to change. And so there are very, very few shows that are picked up that have the same kind of DNA as our show, sadly. 
What about the writer's room? What do you have to say about that? Uh, well, first of all, you, uh, once upon a time, it was right an existing show, and that was your sort of calling card. And now that no, that's now you write something original. Mm -hmm. Yeah, write a, write a, write a pilot, write an idea that you that's been percolating in your mind, and let that be your calling card. You know, something that you, and just say true. Don't assume don't assume what or don't presume what you think people want. Write only what you think is really really great, and then go from there. What other questions are there, please? What we have. Go to a gay guy for God's sake. I'm trying to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I, I, That's all right. Love, love. Go to a human. Go to another human. So Queens no. are all yeah, on this side. Oh, well, okay. they're all on this side. You pick. There's one. Okay. There's one. <laughs> I'll, I'll represent. Give her the mic. So <laughs> when did, so I was living in LA at the time when the show came out, and I'm probably a mix of both characters, mm -hmm. probably. Um, Karen when, and Grace. <laughs> I was right. gonna say that. <laughs> or all four yeah, characters. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, when did the show turn, well, not turn, but just know, like you said at the beginning, that you were just making a show for yourselves and, and that. When did you know like the LGBTQ community and where the storylines were important and like uh, the like the clip you did with the the kissing on TV, was that there a, was there like a season or when did you know that it became important to tell more gay storylines? I the think the key to the success of the show is that we really stayed out of that business because it was there from the pilot. I mean, um, Glad is an incredible organization, but they had a lot to say about the script from day one. And we, you know, uh, we lived a very small existence. We were in a room with these writers and we were writing our stories and, and tried to tune it out. It's not like we, well, uh, I mean, at one point we became the love boat, but I, I mean, other than that. I was gonna say, uh, but we, to, we weren't, we were, I don't think we were being to issued. Be, to be fair, um, were I, we being issued? I, I, I think once, it, once the show was, was, you know, celebrated and safe, you know, f season five, you we were we were much gayer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, sure, I mean when when the thing was on, right? you, but but I, I or may, we've just made a habit of like staying out of that conversation about when when did we I don't right I mean that's, well there was, there was arguably you guys wrote I think it was second season an episode about uh, Jack joining my gym mm -hmm. and and he was being particularly gay and right. I called him the f word yeah yeah. yeah. And they didn't repeat that episode. For, that's the one episode that's ever yeah, ever been never shown aired again. it again. Yeah. But it was there was such truth to it. The idea and the only episode where we lost sponsors. Wow. Yeah. 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 So Amazing. we did take that issue on, but that issue particularly was within the gay community. There are levels and there are and there are feelings, and we dared to sort of show that. And Except I, that I from the very from the pilot, this the story about two people who adore each other and one is gay, mm. what's a gayer story or not? Mm. You know, I mean, for me, mm. <laughs> yeah, mm. I mean that, you know, so. Um, another question, let's see, other questions. That gentleman there, please. Hi everyone, um, I have a question about the global impact of the show because I think I'm an example of it. Um, growing up, I mean, I was in high school, I was watching Will and Grace on TV and I'm from Turkey originally and Turkey used to be more liberal it's not that liberal right now. Um, so anyway, watching the show, of course, I identify a lot of things about myself and I, I was sort of idolizing Will, um, you know, the character. So, um, and I en ended up moving here. Really, I followed that sort of uh, influence from the show and it's still a part of my life. Huh. So I wanna ask you, I mean, the question basically is, do you guys have examples of uh, cool stories from like the global impact the show had in different countries? Because I think it's not just an American story. It's very universal in so many ways. And thank Great you. Question. Yeah. That's so cool. Thank you. Yeah, that's a yeah. That's thank a you. Uh, well, um, I was in Africa. I was in Zimbabwe um, as an ambassador for HIV/AIDS, and I was in against. Okay, yeah. Against. <laughs> 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 Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> and I was, uh, and it, it was a testing clinic. Um, and we just came in and we were walking by the waiting room and I heard uh, Sandra Bernhardt and us singing. That's so cool. And I was like, mm -hmm. in Africa? <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, so, you know, that was, that was exciting to know that. Yeah. This, this week I stood in line to go see uh, uh, Mr. Hayes in, in his show. Mm -hmm. Bravo to Sean. And um, a gentleman uh, f uh, from China tapped me on the shoulder and, and introduced himself and said that, that the show was the thing that he used to connect with uh, throughout his adolescence so he could feel like there was someone else. And I was like, you're the only thing that really like rocks my world like the idea that that there were you know people out there using the show to help them feel more comfortable is just yeah. like the greatest gift that you can ask but I, I I also will say this I mean thinking I mean there was just an election in Turkey and the bad guy won again but yeah. it was close it was really yeah. close but the but the idea that you think okay well we've arrived you know and and you've gotten to a certain point but there's always another force pushing yeah. back against it. And yeah. You realize you have to be ever vigilant. You can't ever get complacent and think, well, the fight's over, you know, we've, we've arrived. It's sad, but it's true. Yeah. And it's been, it's been a real awakening for me. I really thought, oh, wow, the acceptance of this show indicates something, and it does to a point, but you never know when there's going to be a backlash and when you have to keep like fighting mm -hmm. for something. Wow, nice buzzkill to end the night. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much for coming. Thank, Thank you. I'd like to think so, of Can we please give a giant hand <laughs> to our amazing.